So through the... Yes. Also, um, I, I had mentioned to you the, that break the, um, the rise of the equal hour in ancient Egypt and as it relates to monastic life in ancient Egypt, that it doesn't rule monastic life, you were saying, uh, until um, we get the European water clocks. And I was thinking about that, though. In the ancient Egyptian tradition, it is interesting that the clock or the hour rules the passage of the soul. So the hour rules the dead, dead um, through the underworld, through each of the hours. Um, it also it times the, uh, the removal of the spirit from the body at uh, 70 days. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the main character of the Egyptian culture. They regulated more the dead than the life. Yeah. The life of the dead was more regulated than the life of the dead. But there is a, there is a funny connection though between what you're saying though that in the um, Greek era though there, um, the water clock is said to rule the lawyers, right? So it's ruling the rulers in a way. Uh, uh, it's ruling the lawyers, uh, Greek lawyers. No, that's also the other things you said. That they invented all the the measuration time. Okay, you know? yeah. The measuration, of, the measure of time, comes from there. You say. Yeah, but then later on, because it froze in northern Europe and the water clocks froze, they had to come up with. Uh, but, but uh, what is uh, the same What is characteristic of monasticism is that this was applied to the life completely, the life of the man. So the phenomenon of the measure of time interests them only not for astronomical reasons like in Egypt, etc., but only so far it could organize and regulate the Can I pick up on that? That historically, you know, given the fact that there was that the huge library at Alexandria, right? Mm -hmm. um, could there have been an influence in that a transmission of that regulation of time spiritually? From one side of the Mediterranean to the other? Not what from inside, because the first uh, monastic uh, phenomena are in uh, Egypt, it was uh -huh. Basil, the call this area, in an area. So, but uh, why do you see the, the Library of Alexandria? Why the, li the library can have an influence? Uh, it, just the fact that it was an outpost, it was like a, an aggregation of culture and knowledge from all over the Mediterranean, right? plus further. Um, and I was just, I hadn't realized that monast monastic life had started on, um, on that side of the Mediterranean. I, I have, as soon as we started talking about Western Yeah, the beginning was there, but then it went back to, when mm. someone told, uh, I don't remember who was, uh, of course, it, it, I said that is the first time there is such an organization or regulation of life. We, we know that the Pythagoreans also regulated in some way the life of the uh, adepts. So, for example, they, they had to keep silence, like in monastery also, they had to keep silence, etc. Et but what we have here, really, I think, for the first time, is this idea of uh, extremization. There. No monastery. No gesture must uh, escape this uh, uh, san sanctifica sanctification of time and spiritualization of life. And so uh, the prayer, the, the, so the, the, the moment of prayer are not three but become six, uh, it depends, ten, etc. But also all other activity of the monk is conceived in the same way. The, the monk will work. But this uh, uh, work of the monk will have the same, same status as a prayer. It's a kind of prayer. It's, a, as they will say, it's a, in a, the execution of an opus dei, the work of God. Like praying, like uh, everything. So uh, whatever the monks does must be inscribed in that order. So, not only the spiritual, the spiritual work, but also the manual work. And one of the uh, techniques 
So this is not easy. One of the techniques they employed to realize that was what was called the meditatio, a meditation. Meditatio, in the beginning, does not, does not meet what we mean by this term, meditate, meditation, etc. But meditatio was the name given to the oral recitation by heart, by memory, of the text of the writing, the holy writing. Scripture. You say scripture? Right? Yeah, scripture. Yeah, scripture. Yeah, scripture. scripture. Uh, the monk, while he was, whatever, so when he was not praying, whatever he was doing, he had to meditate, meditate, meaning that he had to recite mentally or orally the Holy Scripture. So he had to learn by heart and then be continuously meditate. But meditate in the beginning meant that, not that he had to think. <laughs> and uh, this is an interesting phenomenon because probably you know that, that uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the fact that uh, our way of reading, the way we read silently, yeah, was not common at that moment. Yeah. We can even date the moment in which for the first time they began to read silently. We can do this uh, thanks to Augustine, because Augustine, with great stupor and amazement, <laughs> describes how Ambrosius, kind of master model for him, uh, read without voices, without voice. He says, while he read, his eyes ran through the pages, and his heart read in the mind, but the voice and the tongue were silent. And it's very it's stupefied, but how can you do this? <laughs> so at the time of Augustine, people when read, read at the uh, loud. Uh, there, is, there, was, there was no silent reading. But we know that it began like this, and again, the, the, in the monastery, through the meditatio, was probably the moment in which the silent reading was uh, activated, because the the monk had to meditate and he could do, do like what we did, mentally. He could do orally, he could do uh, aloud, but he could also do like that. It was similar to the idea of uh, uh, the voice uh, is no more necessary. The voice, uh, you can uh, recite and pray with that voice. But till that moment, of course, there was nothing of that kind. So meditation one, uh, was one of this. Think. So what we have here, eh, as you see, no, I'll no, go a little quickly, but this uh, kind of uh, totalitarian organization of the life means also that the rule and life enter in a zone of distinction. The rule will coincide with the whole of life. And this, now to go back to also to begin to uh, ask questions about uh, the juridical, less or more juridical character of law, this is a really a new fact from uh, also uh, in, in the relationship between life and uh, ruling in the sense of the law, everything, uh, prescription. Eh? Till that moment, in the tradition, for instance, of Roman law, uh, law was always referred to singular action. The law cannot apply to the whole of life. This does, make, this does not make sense. In, a, in a, the perspective of a Roman jurist, the idea 